Science fiction has tantalized us with opposing visions of the future, within which robots either liberate mankind from menial tasks and dangerous labor, or result in the destruction of the human race. Regardless, a synthetic being capable of either extreme would depend on AI sufficiently advanced to perceive the world and interact with it in a meaningful way. How far are we from realizing this goal, and how far have we come? Elon Musk recently announced that Tesla are producing a humanoid robot which he boldly promised would drastically change the economy and society by taking on repetitious, dangerous and boring work. The flexibility and ranges of motion of the human body have up until this point proved very difficult to recreate mechanically. Advanced robotics companies such as Boston Dynamics have taken a movement first approach to creating task capable robots and have made great stride in this field. However, a robot is only as useful as the artificial intelligence which dictates how it perceives the world, people and objects and how it may meaningfully interact with them. Creating an android capable of both understanding its environment, decision making and performing complex tasks as Elon promises would require highly advanced artificial intelligence. First off, it's useful to demystify AI. When people hear the phrase artificial intelligence, minds are often cast to popular science fiction, the malevolent AI Skynet, orchestrating humanity's demise in the Terminator series, or to the many idiosyncratic sentient droids populating the Star Wars universe. AI in its simplest form is a computer's capability to perform tasks. We interact with simple AI every day. The voice command in things like Siri or Alexa, this type of AI is an example of what is known as artificial narrow intelligence, or ANI. However, the kind of AI more popularized in science fiction, sentient and autonomous robots, cyborgs, or even computer programs, is AI known as artificial general intelligence. Please, please, you gotta save my little girl. Wait. You're sending an android? All right now, we need to go. You can't do that. You... AGI is a synthetic being with an ability to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. A fun recent example of an AGI is Ryan Reynolds' character in the movie Free Guy, where he plays a non-playable character, an NPC in a Grand Theft Auto online style universe, who attains self-awareness and follows his quest to make the game world a better place. But how far have we actually come in our journey towards creating this sort of artificial intelligence? Our earliest approaches to AI, and one of the most interesting examples of rudimentary systems that were developed, was in 1966, when a computer scientist called Joseph Weissenbaum created a program that he called ELISA, based on a real psychotherapist, Carl Rogers, who was notorious for repeating thoughts of his patients back to them, often in the forms of questions. Such a conversation might go along the lines of having a user enter, Doctor, I'm feeling depressed, to which the AI would respond, Why do you think you're feeling depressed? Question mark. You get the kind of idea behind it. Does it understand what it's doing in the sense that we do? It's easy to leap to false conclusions, as Professor Weizenbaum discovered when he created ELISA. Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. It's true. I am unhappy. Do you think coming here will help you not to be unhappy? Eliza was programmed with a very basic AI that would mimic this exchange using a simple lookup table to generate pre-configured answers to set questions. Weizenbaum discovered something remarkable. After first trialing his secretary and then many others, people were captivated by Eliza and they would start to discuss their intimate thoughts and feelings with the world's first chatbot. Here a lot of the work to develop the AI needed to be front-loaded. Potential inputs that a user might enter needed to be paired with viable outputs or rules that would allow the system to appear intelligent. Once this program was deployed, Eliza could only act as well as she had been programmed. She had no inherent ability to learn or improve her responses over time. An interesting point here being that AI, even when deceptively simple, can appear complex. What seems like an informed response is oftentimes simply a process of a computer program following a flowchart of predetermined answers. All AI that we have at the moment broadly function across this same principle. Over time, we've just become more sophisticated at how we develop those flowcharts, and we've also found some ways of letting the AI themselves 
learn behaviors as they go so that they don't have to be pre-programmed to respond to every single input. There are many branches of AI, but one of particular interest is deep learning where artificial neural networks based on the architecture of the human brain are trained on vast data sets. An example of one of these systems is Google's AlphaGo, which was an AI system designed and taught how to play the ancient Chinese game of Go, a game thought particularly challenging to an AI as the phase space of possible moves is many times greater than chess. It requires a great deal of planning and strategic thinking. AlphaGo was trained by digitizing the results of millions of games of Go played by human players, something that would have been impossible for any human to do and accurately remember. The AI analyzed and drew conclusions from this huge catalog of past games so that it could best determine what was the next most strategic move. To spoil the outcome, AlphaGo beat the highest ranked human grandmaster in four out of five games. This deep learning technique applied to neural networks is incredibly powerful. Whilst we've come a very long way since the earliest AIs that we've developed, our classification of the AIs we can produce have yet to move beyond this artificial narrow intelligence bracket, at least for now. However, the Tesla bot could be something new. Based on the technology that could be argued would very quickly display rudimentary forms of artificial general intelligence. The AI proposed to guide the Tesla bot is based on the same principle as the tech underpinning Tesla's autopilot features in their vehicles, which would still be considered an artificial narrow intelligence as it purely is designed to navigate vehicles around the built environment. Tesla has already spent a lot of time developing the neural networks and learning data that allow their cars to navigate through this world. Tesla is also a world leader in battery and sensing technology, so it makes a lot of sense to take these capabilities and apply them into a human form, as that's the form factor that we've built most of our environment to suit. In doing so, this may be our first look at a simple AGI, an AI that can fold laundry, shop for groceries, and generally take care of the odd jobs that we find boring or repetitive. The really powerful approach that Tesla takes is to never stop training their neural networks on real data. They continually capture from their vehicles out in the wild. And what they're doing here is essentially nurturing a synthetic intelligence slowly over time, showing it how to behave based on images that its sensors collect kind of the same way that you would slowly teach a child how to interact with its environment. Just like Tesla's cars, the Tesla bot won't need to be fully functional, fully working out of the box, but instead it will learn and continue to learn by experiencing the world around it. It will understand which responses to real world stimuli are the correct ones. And by uploading these learnings to the cloud, a lesson learned by one car or one Tesla bot can suddenly be learned by the entire network. This becomes incredibly powerful very quickly. Over time, the Tesla bot will learn how to navigate the human environment and perform human tasks. And this is just stage one. If you look into the proposed teardowns of all the hardware, most of it is dedicated to learning and understanding kinematics and movement around the environment. But once this has been learned by a few thousand Tesla bots over the next few years, it's been learned forever and Tesla may turn its attention to producing a higher order general intelligence. Adding systems that can scan your face, understand your emotional states, maybe even preemptively cook you dinner or put on the TV if it detects that you have had a hard day at work. Beyond that point, the line between artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence, where AI can actually outperform human beings at these tasks, will probably be very quickly passed. Whilst the AI powering the Tesla bot is still absolutely in its infancy and it may be several years before we see any practical demonstrators that actually do anything interesting or useful for us in the world, this is an exciting and bold vision of how technology may reshape our economies and our way of lives. My question to you is what task would you set a Tesla bot to replace first? Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.